the Sarimini class destroyer, or the Project 956 in the Russian naming convention, was designed by the naval architect of the Soviet Union, primarily for surface warfare. A total of 21 ships of this class has been constructed between 1980 and 2004 in St. Petersburg. Most of these have been retired, but as of right now, eight ships remain in service, with four in the Russian Navy and four in the Chinese Navy. This video will focus on the four ships in the Russian Navy. You may remember this as one of my earlier videos, which I felt did not do this topic justice. But if you have not seen the video before, please do sit back and continue. The Soviet Navy had equipped its warships with cruise missiles as early as 1957 in the Cannon class destroyers, which are the world's first guided missile destroyer. However, the Soviet Navy later assessed that the naval gun still has an important role in short-range combat and supporting amphibious landings. Therefore, in the early 1970s, the Soviet Navy developed the Sarimini class destroyer as a heavily armed anti-shipping platform with both large caliber guns in addition to cruise missiles. Thus, the Sarimini class was conceived with four 130mm naval guns and eight supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles. The class displaced 8,400 tons, almost as large as the American Arleigh Burke destroyer. Propulsion is provided by two steam turbines and four high-pressure boilers. The ship has a fairly high top speed of 33 knots and an economic speed of 18 knots. The operational range is 7,200 kilometers. Total complement is around 300 personnel, which is typical for its size. The Sarimini class has three different variants. The original Project 956, the Project 956A with improved anti-ship missiles of a longer range, and the Project 956EM designed for the Chinese Navy with upgraded air defense missiles. The Sarimini does not incorporate features that reduce radar cross-section in a meaningful way. In fact, the large size of the hull and the sheer volume of equipment built on top of the deck amplify its radar signature. In the modern context, the lack of stealth, in addition to relatively outdated air defense systems, are likely to mean that the Sarimini class relies on a first strike strategy, which is to say, either you use your missiles or lose them. So let's talk about the currently active Russian ships, which are the Project 956A ships. They are the Bistri, the Nastoichevi, the Admiral Yushakov, and the Burni. The highlight is their eight improved P-270 Moscow anti-ship cruise missiles. They fly at a supersonic speed of Mach 3 with a range of 250 kilometers and are capable of being armed with either a large conventional high explosive warhead or a thermonuclear warhead. The other heavy equipment for surface combat is the four 130mm naval guns, the AK-130, arranged in two twin turrets, one front and one aft. The AK-130 has a range of 23 kilometers and a rate of fire of 40 rounds per minute. With four guns, the ship can output a high volume of shells and can target low-flying aircraft, such as helicopters. A single hit from these cruise missiles will probably be enough to cripple 
a modern destroyer. The four naval guns can be used in close-range combat and to support ground forces operating close to shore. These capabilities make the Sovereignty class suitable for the Russian naval strategy in the Baltic and the Black Seas, where the goal is not the command of the sea, but simply to contest sea control and deny NATO forces from using the sea to mount amphibious attacks. One weakness of the Sovereignty class is the air defense system. The ship possesses some individually capable equipment for air defense purposes. For example, the main search radar is the competitive Frigate MR750 top plate passive phased array radar, which is optimized for both the D and E band frequencies. The ship carries 48 of the Gadfly surface to air missiles with a respectable range of 140 kilometers, and these are guided by a formidable arrangement of six fire control radars. However, the main pitfall is the way these missiles are launched. The Sovereignty does not use a modern system of vertical launch cells, but rely on two single-arm missile launchers, one behind each gun turret. Surface-to-air missiles are reloaded onto the launcher from a magazine stored below the deck, and each reload takes about 12 seconds to complete. This missile launch system reduces the rate of fire for surface-to-air missiles compared to a modern vertical launch system. In addition to the SAMs, the ship also carries four AK-630 autocannons for last-ditch defense against incoming missiles, but these SeaWiz are quite old and would only be able to handle subsonic targets. Last but not least, the class is equipped with a pair of the PK-2 electronic decoy launchers, which are intended to confuse missile guidance systems. Clearly, the Sovereignty class is not a suitable destroyer for fleet air defense. At most, it might be able to defend itself against small numbers of incoming missiles. However, its survivability against saturation attacks is low, given a lack of stealth and a low rate of intercept. The Project 956A Sovereignty class destroyers are outfitted with the MGK-355 Platina Integrated Sonar System, which includes a hull-mounted sonar, a towed array sonar, and a variable depth sonar. This suite greatly expands the range of its underwater detection. For anti-submarine weapons, the class hosts four Type 53 long-range torpedoes and a pair of the RBU-1000 rocket launchers that fire a salvo of six depth charges each. In addition, there are two CAR-27 ASW helicopters, which are very capable. The improvements in the ASW department from the original Project 956, particularly in terms of sonar, make the Project 956A a formidable submarine hunter. In summary, the four Sovereignty classes in Russian service are formidable in the offensive role, with their supersonic cruise missiles. But they appear to have fairly low survivability in modern naval combat. As surface combatants, these destroyers are ideally used in the first strike with their potent anti-ship missiles. The truth is that the Sovereignty class destroyer is becoming increasingly obsolete, so Russia is in the process of phasing out the class as more of the very capable Admiral Gorshkov class frigates enter service. There is actually a lot of interesting discussion surrounding the Chinese acquisition of the Sovereignty class, including the historical background around the deal and the modifications that China made to the ships. 
I had talked about this briefly in the robots version of this video, but I now feel that this is a standalone topic that deserves a deeper look.